four elephants. One GPU. NVIDIA is slaughtering elephants to produce GPUs. Notice the beautiful lights. So many different lights and all of the different lights are projecting light. None of that conversation was scripted. Uh, yes, that, that was apparent. Thank you, Jensen. Moore's Law is probably currently running at about two times. The demand for every single generation increased and increased and increased. Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. I am the sound effect. Are you guys with me? Hi, am I alone? I have a lot to tell you, very little time, so let's get going. I'm sorry I took so much time, so you're gonna have to... We'll go quick. Split. It's 14 inch. It weighs almost nothing. Everything I'm showing today are very heavy. It weighs almost nothing. This is 60 pounds, 65 pounds. Even this is incredibly heavy. I wonder if this can play Crisis. Only gamers know that joke. You know karaoke, right? Taiwanese love karaoke. You're gonna join me on this one, okay? I will make you like me first. Yeah, sing, sing it with me. I really. This is the part. This is the part. Like and <laughs> yeah. okay. All right, with that kind of performance, I'm gonna hire AI next time. The keynote was a total show at Computex. Uh, it wasn't just boring and meandering, but oftentimes incomprehensibly contradictory. Are you guys with me? Even still, watching the NVIDIA keynote was at times like watching a sitcom. Thank you, Wilson. Oh, Janine doesn't speak Chinese. <laughs> Except instead of friends, where you watch a group of people struggle to navigate human relationships, we watch a billionaire CEO struggle to navigate how to eliminate human relationships for a man-made future dystopian hellscape. I'd watch the sitcom. I'm here to tell you about how wonderful stinky tofu is. It's best from the night market. The, the only input was words. The output was that video. And um, Paul, Tom? We have a lot more to talk about. Fortunately, not much of it is actually news. We have some news. We've broken that out to do our jobs, but there's a lot of just commentary about the absolute inanity and the state of NVIDIA, where it has become almost aggressively defensive about its GPU pricing. Let's get started. Before that, this video is brought to you by Deepcool and the new Zero Dark series of AK620 and AK400 CPU coolers. We previously reviewed the AK620 and AK400 and found them to be among a new crop of extremely competitive coolers for the price. The new Zero Dark and Zero Dark Plus variations move out to a blackout color design with blackout FDB fans. The heat sinks otherwise have the same characteristics as those that we tested previously and found to be well performing, just with a fresh new look. Learn more at the link in the description below. Even if you're into AI, this presentation will save you the time, don't bother, it was mostly a self-congratulatory circle for the entirety of the presentation, uh, and it points towards a greater concern we have about bordering anti-consumer behaviors. And this is something we've voiced several times now about NVIDIA over the years, but each time it kind of assures everyone and says, no, 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 we don't want to be like Apple. We're going to let you choose between GPU partners, and we want a healthy ecosystem except increasingly it is becoming evident that this is not the vision that CEO Jensen Huang has. That's NVIDIA. And now it makes more sense where NVIDIA CEO Jensen Huang's mentality comes from because on that stage, it's almost like he needed an empty chair next to him. He was starting to pick fights with an opponent that didn't exist. So $10 million gets you nearly 1,000 CPU servers. For a $10 million server, you buy 48 GPU servers. It's the reason why people say that GPU servers are so expensive. He became defensive towards the idea of price to the extent of offending himself. It was very odd in those instances. And although that wasn't the majority of the presentation, the argument being made, it's, uh, it's Jensen's police. Thought, I thought maybe he heard me, was kind of worried for a little bit. It's a very powerful man. Here's an example of one of the more, at least weird and comical, if a little bit concerning statements. 
The more you buy, the more you save. That's right. The more you buy, the more you save. The more you buy, the more you save. That's NVIDIA. You don't have to understand the strategy. You don't have to understand the technology. The more you buy, the more you save. That's the only thing you have to understand. NVIDIA is selling to idiots. You don't have to understand the strategy. You don't have to understand the technology. Statements like this telegraph that is their intent very clearly. I, it's especially true when they say things like, The iPhone moment of AI has started. For a company that has pushed back privately sometimes when we've said, hey, you're acting a little bit like Apple, this, this, to say literally, it's our iPhone moment, is about as Apple as you can get. That concerns us because Apple's a very closed ecosystem that is very anti-consumer. You need developers, but a developer would only come if they're, and developers have to create applications that end users would buy. Developers, 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 yes! Although this keynote was focused on AI and data center, it really does have undertones for what's to come for consumers. And you see it again with NVIDIA's intent previously to purchase ARM, the only relevant agnostic large chip designer being purchased by any of the big three silicon sellers. Uh, that's concerning. And NVIDIA seemed hurt by the 4060 Ti launch. Right here, you're looking at an ADA GPU running ray tracing and artificial intelligence at 60 frames a second. And what they did was talk about how every time there's a new architecture, demand goes up and up and up, naming Pascal, Touring, Ampere, forgetting to name ADA Lovelace. Uh, and that's how we get to where we are now with the 4060 Ti with a card that very publicly is known to have failed on the market and struggled to sell at the pricing it's hit. So this is not a secret and Nvidia clearly is aware of the performance and the reception of the 4060 Ti kept it brief, but again, kind of tried to soften it by saying, but look, we always sell through all the GPUs. The demand is crazy. The demand for every single generation increased and increased and increased. Where's all the customers I paid to be in the audience? With that kind of performance, I'm gonna hire AI next time. In the interest of condensing the keynote and delivering it to you in an efficient way, uh, NVIDIA went on to push its Costco model of the more you buy, the more you save several times. And then it eventually devolved into discussion about artificial intelligence factories and talked about how intelligence producers are people, painting a very clear, almost like cyberpunk future dystopia anime picture of people in tubes with their brains being used for processing power or something along those lines. At least that's what I took away from it. So uh, one of the quotes. In the future, every single major company will also have AI factories. Although he's maybe not wrong, it is a little bit weird to hear it. And that was what half the keynote was focused on. Uh, Jensen Huan also made a kind of contradictory remark where he somewhat famously previously told, I believe it was Gordon Ma Un, uh, on record at a press event that Moore's Law was dead. And then in this presentation, he said Moore's Law is running at 2x. Moore's Law is probably currently running at about two times. So um, does it make sense? I don't know. Maybe this chart will help you understand. It will try to understand what you mean. As for the actual news relevant to us and getting away from sort of the insanity and absurdity of the keynote, and it's, this is true for pretty much every keynote, uh, the main angle was the existence of Hopper GPUs, which is currently going to data center in the H100, kind of like you might have the A or the V100 previously. This is a precursor to a future GPU generation. It may be the case that Hopper comes to gaming, maybe not. Sometimes they skip a generation, but Hopper was the big one. And eventually that technology, if not the full architecture, will come to the consumer market. Now, NVIDIA didn't share much architectural information or really any at all about Hopper, but the next most relevant was NVIDIA's vision for AI generated NPCs and NPC conversations in games, which does seem like it will be a thing eventually, but maybe they should have waited a little bit to show it because they debuted it with this awkward, clumsy conversation that CEO Jensen Huang was quite proud of. Hey Jen, how are you? Unfortunately, not so good. How come? 
I am worried about the crime around here. It's gotten bad lately. My ramen shop got caught in the crossfire. I have heard rumors that the powerful crime lord Kuman Aoki is causing all sorts of chaos in the city. I have heard he hangs out in the underground fight clubs on the city's east side. None of that conversation was scripted. Uh, yes, that, that was apparent. Thank you, Jensen. Notice the beautiful lights. So many different lights, and all of the different lights are projecting light from that source. For this demo, NVIDIA wrote a background for the character, and then used a large language model to build the character's interactions, and it also obviously used AI to generate uh, the movements or the animations in general, as we understand it. They were calling this the Conv AI, C-O-N-V AI, super pronounceable. Uh, and that's a solution that I probably means convolutional AI or just convoluted. NVIDIA's team, we think, should have waited a little while longer to show this because it just comes across as out of touch from the billionaire CEO who is presenting this as if it's some sort of revolutionary thing and it's targeted at the gaming audience, even though the rest of this audience is supposed to be data center and AI. And uh, as someone in that gaming audience more than the other, I watched it and was like, this looks like a, an awful video game. I would rather read the words uh, because it just, it had no character. There was no real voice acting, of course. The writing was atrocious. And in the same way that you would watch this demo, or well, that you would interact with this in a game, hear these things from, let's say, a real actor and a real writer, you would be almost uh, laughing yourself to the Alt F4 combination. That too was how we felt watching this, where it's just not impressive to people who've played video games before. I have heard I'm worried about the crime around here. I have heard my ramen shop got caught in the crossfire. Now, is it a stepping stone? Yes, of course. That's where we are with AI tech right now. And uh, I'm, um, I'm being told to stop being mean. Let me adjust. It's a brilliant stepping stone that we completely believe in and we think now is the right time to talk about it. The whistling has stopped. As for the rest of the news, the company also showcased AI synthesis of people that was kind of clumsy and awkward once again. It's a little early for this stuff. They had uh, an awkwardly executed joke about stinky tofu or something like that that wasn't quite close enough to Uncanny Valley to be worth putting in the presentation. I'm here to tell you about how wonderful stinky tofu is. It's best from the night market. Uh, and they had a disturbing karaoke segment where NVIDIA had AI write a song about NVIDIA and then had the AI sing it and provide the background music. Then after going through it once, Jensen asks the crowd to join along and sing with him. I will make you like me first, yeah. Sing, sing it with me, I really. This is the part, this is the part. Like NVIDIA. NVIDIA. Okay. At least we know it definitely wasn't pre-recorded because they would not have left that in. I'll take jokes from an out of touch billionaire for $800. Whoosh, like that. Now beyond that, back on the hard news side of things, Jensen Juan mostly boasted of things like improving computer graphics a thousand X in five years, while unironically having just launched and even held an RTX 4060 Ti, which stagnated and failed to improve, it's the wind in the mic, failed to improve computer graphics in just two years. Kind of a weird juxtaposition. We get where he's trying to go with it. He didn't get there. Are you guys with me? Hi, am I alone? Now for servers. NVIDIA had some actual news in server land as well, but it was pretty brief. So we parsed the drawn out keynote down to bring you the actual things they said. NVIDIA showcased its $200,000 computer, Whoosh. which Juan said is quote, the single most expensive computer that you can say the more you buy, the more you save for. And uh, it's a joke that landed about as hard as a Big Bang Theory joke, except they forgot to put the laugh track in. It's the world's single most expensive computer that you can say the more you buy, the more you save. Now that computer is 65 pounds. Jensen Huang goes on to describe this as the heaviest computer that's ever existed. I don't know. I don't know what the... No computers has ever been this heavy before. It's like, <laughs> I really don't know what they were talking That is not, not only is that not a thing that matters, it's also just not true. So really strange. There were several instances of that. 
I don't, did we already say the thing about Moore's Law is dead? Currently running at about two times. The next thing they talked about was Grace Hopper. Grace Hopper is why NVIDIA wanted to buy ARM. So ARM is making the Grace part and NVIDIA is making Hopper. It's a combined component that mixes CPUs from ARM with GPU aspects from NVIDIA. Grace Hopper, Grace Hopper has more memory has more memory on this one module. So that combined CPU and GPU has 576 gigabytes of memory that's coherent between the CPU and the GPU. That's its main point. NVIDIA noted that this solution uses LPDDR memory and hosts 72 ARM CPUs, 96 gigabytes of HBM3, and then the nearly 600 gigabytes of memory operating at 900 megabytes per second. 600, 600 gigabytes? 900 megabytes per second. Maybe he meant gigabytes per second, but they should probably just hire AI to host this next time instead. Wouldn't have those problems then. So I'm going to hire AI next time. NVIDIA also showed off a server with 2,000 fans that weighs 40,000 pounds. That's where the elephant thing came from. Uh, and then he made a joke that'll definitely land with gamers. I wonder if this can play Crisis. <laughs> Only gamers know that joke. Well, that's it. We sat through two hours of that, so you wouldn't have to. Now you know everything that happened, which is basically nothing. You're welcome. Uh, so we'll stop by NVIDIA suite later. They have a demo suite. We're going to go there during Computex. Hopefully there's some cool stuff. We'll cover it. But as far as the keynote, it's like a lot of keynotes at these events, which is basically don't waste your time. Uh, and some of these technologies really aren't at prime time yet. There are weird, almost inhuman statements that were being made about an AI future, which once again, is not necessarily wrong. It's just sort of the, how are you going about enacting that future as a person who is actually kind of in control of large aspects of it? So uh, NVIDIA, we think, isn't really taking a balanced approach to this vision, but what we think is kind of irrelevant because, because we'll be replaced with AI soon. So thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Subscribe for more as always. Go to store.cameraxaccess.net to help us out directly. And we'll see you all next time. Whoosh, whoosh, like that. Whoosh. I am the sound effect.